Hey, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com, and welcome to the second video in the Joomla 4 template development series. In this video, we're going to talk about the project folder and file structure. So to do this, we're going to examine that package that we installed earlier. We're going to take a look at all the different files, kind of understand where they go and what they do. So the original package that we should have downloaded in the last video was the J4 starter template. And that is a zip package that contains a number of files and folders. Now, Joomla doesn't put these all in one directory, but it actually spreads them out across three separate directories as defined by this template details.xml file. So let's take a look at these three different directories and kind of get an idea of what each is for. So we take our j4starter.zip file, we upload it to the Joomla backend with the extension manager. The extension manager takes a look at that template details.xml file in the root of the j4starter.zip file or the package file. And that kind of helps it figure out what goes where. And we'll take a look at that after we go over everything here. So the first and probably the most important folder is the main template folder. And that is located in the site root slash templates folder slash whatever the template's name is. And in this case, the name is, of course, J4 Starter. And the purpose of this folder is to define the template itself and to contain any template logic functions, config settings, etc. So this is where the template's configured and most of like the PHP goes, anything that has to do with the actual logic functioning uh, and HTML of the template. It contains index.php. That's the main template file. It, it contains the template details XML file which again defines where all these different folders go. And it also provides other information to Joomla about this template. It contains joomla.acid.json. And that's another configuration file that contains references to these other important folders and files that we have um, with regards to styles and scripts. And an HTML folder that contains layout overrides, which is another thing we'll have to get into in a minute. So next folder is the media folder. The media folder is located in the site root slash media directory. And then there's another directory in there called templates, site, and then this template name. So it's kind of buried in there a bit. But the purpose of this folder is to store all the important assets. That includes things like images. If you happen to have video, you would put it in there. Um, scripts and styles, so JavaScript and CSS go in this folder here. And for J4 starter, it's going to contain our SCSS folder, our SAS folder, our CSS folder, our images folder, and a JavaScript folder. Finally, we have the languages folder. And this is still important, but it's not as important with regards to the overall template functioning. It's located in the site root language folder slash whatever the language code is for the language you're using. And in this case, I used the English um, Great Britain version, so EN-GB. Now, I'm from the USA, but ENGB is pretty standard, so anyone who, you know, speaks British English can speak American English and vice versa. The, I just use ENGB for everything, even though I'm based in the US. There is technically a EN-US version as well, um, but I just use that as the default since Joomla's from there. Anyways, the purpose of the languages folder and the language files is to make it so our template's translatable and any extension is translatable. Um, it contains these INI files, and these define language constants along with values. So whenever we have some certain like text in the back end, like say we want to have a style option and we want to say, pick your theme color here. Um, we would define that label in the language file, and then it would be translatable between different languages. So if someone wanted to come and translate our template into Spanish or French or what have you, they could just edit the INI files and 
update those values accordingly, and then Joomla would just pull in the correct languages automatically without us having to do anything or create separate like extensions. So a quick overview of my development process. If you're on a team, of course, you're going to be using Git or some type of version control, and that's still a good idea if you know how to use Git. As a single developer, and for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be using Git because I think that adds and kind of a, a layer of unnecessary confusion, possibly. Um, so this is what I do for my development process here, just for like simple templates like this one. So I installed my base template, which is J4 Starter, and then I open the entire directory in Visual Studio Code. I edit the files in their respective folders as I need to, so in the languages folder, in the media folder, and in the main template folder. So I just edit those, add styles, add layouts, whatever I need to do. And once I'm satisfied with how everything looks, by previewing it on my local test install, I go ahead and I kind of reverse engineer everything. Um, I take all those three folders and all the three all the files from those folders. I throw them into a a new folder. I zip that up. It's packaged. It's ready to go, and then I can upload that to a live production server, and or an, another test server and see how it works. Or I could, you know, uh, share that file with someone or even sell it if that's where your end goal is. But for my backup system, I just back up those packaged files I create to like OneDrive and I use Windows file history just to back up my entire Joomla install. So how you back it up is up to you. How you go about doing all this is up to you. Um, but for now, we're just going to be talking about the files so let's get on with this. Um, I will tell you how to repackage everything in the last main video of the series. Okay, so now I'm in the base or site root folder for the Joomla install that I created and kind of demoed a little bit in the last video. So if you're caught up with me from the last video, you should have Joomla installed locally on your computer. And in my case, it's under localhost slash doomtoot. And I have the J4 starter template installed. So everything looks ugly, just as it should. I want to open the site root with Visual Studio Code. So I can just right click and open with code. Then here, you can see we have all of the files for the Joomla install. And let's go ahead and start with the main template folder and just take a look through all those files. So templates, J4 starter, and index.php. So this is the first kind of important file we need to know that's basically required. All this stuff at the top is PHP code, um, starting with where it says PHP and ending with this question mark and then the, um, what's that, a greater than sign. And then everything below that is HTML. So this is where I actually define the layout of the template and say where like this goes here. This is the classes I'm going to use. Um, up in the top with all the PHP code, that's basically some boilerplate that I've included just to get us started. It automatically will load the CSS and the JS files that we need from the media folder and set some important default settings. So we really won't have to touch anything up here, but I will go into more detail on that later. Next file is joomla.asset.json. And I mentioned earlier, this contains kind of like, it's like a map or it contains references to all the other important scripts and styles that we use. So the main CSS file for this template is gonna be called template.min.css. And that is defined in here. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail on joomla.asset.json. We're just going to kind of use these files that are already there and defined in here. So you really won't have to touch this unless you want to go in detail and add more like CSS files later in the future or different like libraries and things like that. But this tells Joomla basically that this is where all of our, all of our scripts and all of our CSS files, lists them all here. Joomla knows where to get them based on this file. Template details.xml. So this is a very important file. This defines the package 
it tells us where or it tells Joomla some certain like key information about the template, like the name of the template, the version, the creation date. You can fill this out if you want, your name, your email, copyright information. This right here is a language constant. So this is what I was talking about earlier when I mentioned that we want to use those language files to make the template translatable. So in this case, when we install the template, it shows a certain description and this comes from that language file. So TPL, J4 starter, XML description. And then if I go into my languages folder and I find that J4 starter, that system, that INI, you can see here template J4 starter, XML description, a sample nearly blank template, yada, yada, yada. So that's where I just described the template. And then if I wanted to translate this into French, I could just create a French version of this language file and write this here. I just replace that with whatever I wanted to um, for the French translation. So that's the language file. And those are some key stats that you can kind of just change around as you want. Don't mess with the first line up here, the extension type being a template, the client is a site, the method is upgrade. That's just telling Joomla that this is a template. It's a front end or site template, not an admin template. And then when we upgrade this package, it just overwrites all the files in these folders as necessary. Um, so if we have version 1.19 here and we update this to version 1.20, and then I create my package um, and it's all ready to go. I take all those folders, stick them all together. Joomla knows based on this upgrade method that it can just overwrite the old files um, with the new files from this new package. Files tag here defines all the files that are contained within our main template folder. So the, this file itself, the index.php, Joomla asset.json, and HTML. So all four of those items are in the main template folder and that's defined within that files tag and you do have to define all this stuff at least for the root files and folders because if you don't Joomla will not know where to put these files it will um, error out on you if you don't define this properly the media destination so this is saying okay from the package take these files that are in the media folder and put them in to template slash site slash J4 starter under Joomla's media folder. So let's go here. Actually, it might be helpful if we take a look at the package again and kind of go back and forth. So let me open J4 starter. So this is the zip file. And you can see all the folders and files are together, like I explained earlier. Um, so index.php, Joomla asset, template details, and the HTML folder, those all went into the main folder as was defined up here. The next set of folders, you can look, I have images, JS, SCSS, and CSS. So I have four more folders here that are in the package, and I tell Joomla to put those in the media folder. So now if we go to my media folder under templates site j4 starter we can see that those four folders came from the package and they were placed in the media folder and these are fairly self-explanatory i'm not going to go into detail about each of these files but we have our main template file um any images that we want, like the fav icon, can go into that images folder. If we need to add more images for our template later, we can do that by putting them in there. JavaScript, that's going to have the templates JavaScript. If you are using any JavaScript, we're not really getting into JavaScript in the series. And then we have SAS. So this is a very important folder for styling the template that we're going to get into in the next lesson. But this is where we put those SCSS files that we're eventually going to compile together into a single CSS file. All right, so that pretty much defines it. We went over the languages folder and the main folder and the media folder. It's positions tags here, back in template details XML. If we keep going down, we have positions. These are the module positions. This is what actually defines where the language files go. So this works just like the media um, section, but for the language files. 
And finally at the bottom we have these config settings and this is where we can define custom fields for our template. So in this case I just have one field called test pram. It's a radio button and this this basically gives us a value that we can then go in and access in the back end. So if I go to localhost slash doom toot slash admin history tour, I log in, I take a look at the J4 starter template in the back end. Go to the advanced tab, you can see I have this test parameter and I can toggle it on and off. It has values of zero or one. So if it's set to one, I can I can check like with the function in my templates PHP file and do something with that. Um, I'm not really getting into that in this, in, at least in these first four initial videos, I might discuss this later and there is a separate written tutorial on how to configure this type of thing um, later. So there's all sorts of different fields we can use. And if you want to add like customization options to your template, you're planning on selling your template or using it across multiple different websites and you want it to be easily customizable, this is the type of thing you would do to set that up um, in its simplest form. All right, so I believe I've gone over all the different files and folders that are involved here. And in the next video, we're going to get started working on coding with our index.php file. And we're going to start working on the template styling to make it look like this. All right, thanks for watching. If you appreciate my video, please check out my website, subscribe, or leave a tip. The tip jars on my website. Thanks again. Take care. Have a good one.